Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the long-term view of silver provided by netdania.com. Now you can see that uh, down here with the monthly crossover that we're still waiting for that cross to occur. We're sitting here at about 1726. Um, significantly higher than the bottom that we put in, but still just dirt cheap. You can imagine if you did the math, I think I've done it before, but if you think about the math of where prices were in 2008 and we're now here seven years later with silver at the same price, um, it's got to be easily as cheap as it was here or here, or it's probably even as cheap as it was there. Um, so this is still just bottom stacking time. I know it seems like an intermin interminably long time but probably when it's over you're going to look back i know i did with this 2008 bottom you're going to look back and say oh why didn't i stack more so look at it as an opportunity to stack more now this is going to be a conspiracy wrap-up that's why it's a members update there's just a lot of stories i want to touch upon just stuff that i keep track of daily and it's just kind of piled up so i wanted to talk about a few of these before I do that, I want to update you on my positions. Now, again, I don't give investment advice, so don't take this as advice. That This is just the positions that I'm currently playing with in my little tiny paper accounts. And to be perfectly honest with you, most of the trading that I've done, I have always lost money on. So this is just something that keeps me busy. It's kind of like instead of going to the casino and playing a hold'em or something, you can go online and play with Bitcoins for 50 cents so it just keeps me busy but these are the positions i'm playing with um, i am short of this stock simon property group and uh, i'm short from about i think 204 or 205 i think i talked about this one before uh, it's a major mall owner and i think they're going to collapse uh, the other position that i have right now i am long the Russian ruble so um, I think you can actually get a better view if you uh, do RUB USD as opposed to USD RUB so I'm basically long from somewhere around in here and I'm looking for this uh, to cross over in this rally I just it's very hard to for me to believe that the US and the shenanigans that they're pulling starting with Ukraine and with the oil price that they're going to be able to bankrupt Russia again. I, I don't believe they will, but maybe they will. Um, and then the other position I put on today is I went long the Swiss franc versus the Japanese yen. Uh, this is kind of a risky one. I did it in my Forex account and I got in somewhere around 127. So it's about break even right now. My guess is that most of the uh, rebound from the initial reaction is over and that I think that the trend is going to resume. Um, I think it was from Market Wizards. Uh, one of the traders talked about how uh, if you see an enormous move in one direction, wait for the reaction and go with it. So that's what I'm doing uh, with that one. Those are the plays that I'm working on. Again, those are just little paper trading things to keep me entertained uh, of course the core position is stacking physical silver so let's go and look at these conspiracy theory stories uh, just to give you an idea what I'm thinking about them what is going on uh, the first one here is the and these are all on the blog Jennifer keeps track of these and, and gets them posted if uh, the employees don't find them then she does or I do so here's one this is um, Fed attack on Rand Paul and Howard Dean wants to force vaccina vaccinations on your children. Now, it's pretty much gotten to the point now. You can go to my website, ebolahoax.com. I don't have it updated. I'm probably going to just um, convert it over to an anti-vaccination site because their Ebola hoax failed. And that was, of course, the entire purpose of, of creating the site, not to credit myself with making that thing fail, but... Um, that gigantic hoax they gave up on, which is fantastic. But the one that's in the media now is the measles hoax thing. And um, so they're they're trying to, 
they're trying to force everyone to get vaccinated. Of course, the argument is stupid if you think about it. Um, it I mean, they've, they've come out with really dumb arguments, but if you use just your common sense, you'll realize that if the vaccine protects you against the measles or whatever it is, then how are you threatened by people who don't get vaccinated? It's just plain dumb. And they're, <laughs> but they're trying to justify forcing everyone to get vaccinated. I personally believe that vaccinations don't work at all and they kill people, etc. That whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. Do your own research. Uh, next one, this was a huge, huge uh, story on the blog. This is a covering of the story of this uh, burning of this Jordanian pilot. And this is the, the video debunked. Uh, I think this is pretty obviously a hoax. And if you watch the video, you can see in there how uh, there's a lot of things that don't make any sense. First of all, the flames jump up before they could have even been at that spot. Um, the second thing is that it, the person doesn't even try to escape the fire. The cage isn't even held down to the ground in any way you could have pushed against it and then the last thing is there's a lot of photos of what appear to be a dummy so i i think that thing's a hoax but you'll have to investigate it for yourself next story this is a big story for me this is about kent hovind if you haven't followed it i encourage you to follow it kent hovind is a person who has absolutely destroyed the evolutionists um the video i posted down here uh 100 reasons why evolution is stupid by kent hovine it's kind of interesting the um other video that was on youtube about this i posted uh, a comment on there uh saying evolution is not only stupid it's pure mind control and then there was a long debate it actually was the longest thread that i've ever seen um from a comment or my comment or anyone's comment, it had hundreds of responses. Uh, I found out today when I tried to find that to post it on this that the video has been deleted, and that's because apparently they wanted to stifle the debate. But uh, Kent Hovind has been put in prison. They're trying now to put him in prison for the rest of his life, and uh, the story is, is ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with him because I don't agree with the sovereign... Uh, citizen people. I do not agree with them. Uh, yes, I believe the IRS is a bunch of thugs. Yes, I believe that most of the basis is illegal, etc., etc., etc. But th then as a Christian, for me, uh, the Bible's very clear. It says uh, that he who carries the gun, he who is armed with the sword is not armed for no reason. So, y pay your taxes. <laughs> and if, honestly, if you want to uh, get out of a situation like this, then just call up the IRS and say, okay, put me on a payment plan. If you fight them, and this, and I'm not saying that he's not right, he, he could be right in everything he said. I think he had bad advice, but there's no question he's being persecuted because um, there are rapists and murderers who get out for less time. But he's a person who fought the IRS. He will not uh, give up. And, and you know, there's other stories like that. There's Peter Schiff's dad, Erwin Schiff. I think he's still in prison. So if you're, if you're going to fight the IRS, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. I may be wrong. He may be right. Uh, the rumor is that there are, he's had as many as 600 conversions in the prison. So um, heaven forbid I speak against a man when he's correct. He may have made the right decision. He's just being persecuted. But Nevertheless, uh, this is an amazing story, and then I linked another video here with um, Lois Lerner, and it's fairly obvious that persecution of Christians is coming very, very fast in this country and in the world. So investigate that story if you're interested in it. Uh, next one is, uh, this is the title that Jennifer did. This is pretty much in your face. Muslim Obama lays blame for Roman Catholic Crusades, Inquisitions on Historically Protestant Americans at National Prayer Breakfast. This story is blowing up all over right now. Sean Hannity's talking about it. It's on the alternative websites. You can see a picture here 
Here's a picture with uh, the Roman Catholics and uh, the Franciscan priests at the slaughter in Yugoslavia. You can see here the, the Catholics, they're burning of people. Here's Obama laughing and joking with his friends in the Vatican. Well, you know, it, it's, it's utterly absurd if you think about it. Christians do not advocate conversion at, a, at the tip of a sword. That's utterly absurd. Uh, even a cursory reading of the Bible, Jesus said, uh, the time will come when those who kill you will believe that they're doing God a service. Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world and my servants would fight, there's no question that there's no way you can interpret the Bible and what Jesus taught, what he did, what Paul taught, what he did as teaching that you would convert someone at the tip of a sword. It doesn't even make any sense. That's new, not who God is. There's no way you could have a real conversion if it was upon the fear of death. So it doesn't make any sense. We know this. American Christians have never been responsible for that. I cannot think of an instance on American soil where uh, someone has been uh, killed because they wouldn't convert to Christianity. So it's just ridiculous, disingenuous. We know that it's the Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is behind the creation of Islam. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church is in hiding right now, but they would just as soon kill you for not believing what they tell you to believe as these Muslims, which I will say that many of these Muslim atrocities that we're seeing, these are hoaxes, and they're being perpetrated by the intelligence agencies of America, England, Israel, etc. So that's that story. Next one, IRS seeks 9,000 new employees as it prepares to enforce Obamacare. As millions of Americans brace for tax season, the Internal Revenue Service is requesting $2 billion to boost its budget and 9,000 new employees. Now think about how absurd that is, that they need that many more employees and they need to spend $2 billion to enforce this Obamacare. So that tells you what it's really about. It's a growing federal monster, and it's going to keep growing. Next story. Get your loved ones off of Facebook. Now, we have a Facebook account. You can see here on my icons. Actually, uh, for my other channels, for the Bitcoin channel and for uh, this channel and for the NASA channel and for the Ebola channel, I've gone through various instances where I have lost my Facebook and uh, that that is because for whatever reason they made a determination that I wasn't a real person probably because when I got my Facebook initially there wasn't this big enforcement that you have to prove who you are well I, from the very beginning I knew that <laughs> I'm not telling you anything about who I am that would be utterly moronic for me to tell you who my what my real identity is just so anybody who wants to come and kill me can hunt me down and kill me that's stupid so from the very beginning I have resisted that but most of my channels and and things that I have on Facebook were in existence before that has happened but there have been many times when I've gone in and tried to go in and see what my followers were I don't I don't use it for anything but for tweeting and it's connected to Twitter and it but I don't use it at all uh, but I've tried to go in and I'm locked out and then I have to prove who I am and they have some tests and uh, sometimes I can remember somebody that I'm linked to and I, I pass a test other times I don't it really doesn't matter to me uh, if push comes to shove, I'll just go ahead and delete it. Facebook, I personally believe that Facebook is a creation of the U.S. government. And I believe that uh, probably Google and Twitter and everything else is as well. Um, their unbelievable success and instant success is probably a testimony of the fact that they were seated by the feds. Uh, next one, and this will be the last one. This is from the Moon Hoax channel. And Jennifer and I recently watched the movie Interstellar. If you haven't seen it, it's a really bad movie. I don't advise you paying good money to watch this movie because it's really, really bad. But what was interesting about the movie is that they had a reference to the moon hoax, the Apollo moon missions being faked. So I'm going to play you a audio of a video 
YouTube that contains the audio of this segment in the the movie, and I'm going to comment on it. Did Interstellar reveal that the moon landing was a hoax? This has been debated in conspiracy circles ad nauseum, but I was watching Interstellar, the new uh, Christopher Nolan film with Matthew McConaughey and uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Anne, Anne Hathaway, Hathaway. And there's a bunch of people in it. And she was At any rate, horrible. Interstellar is a movie about a team of explorers who travel through a wormhole in an attempt to ensure humanity's survival. And there's a point where the lead character, um, Matthew McConaughey, is called into a teacher parent conference. His wife is deceased. And the teacher, I believe it's the teacher and the principal, but the, the woman says that the moon landing was a hoax. And Matthew McConaughey's character, he was an astronaut and pilot. And he's like, you don't believe this? And you'll hear her explanation. I'll just play the clip and I'll come right back. But I was very shocked when I heard this. Let's see what you think. Murph is a great kid. She's really bright. But she's been having a little trouble lately. She brought this in to show the other students the section on the lunar landings. Yeah, it's one of my old textbooks. She always loved the pictures. It's an old federal textbook. We've replaced them with the corrected versions. Corrected. Explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. You don't believe we went to the moon? I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda that the Soviets bankrupted themselves, pouring resources into rockets and other useless machines. Useless machines. And if we don't want a repeat of the excess and wastefulness of the 20th century, then we need to teach our kids about this planet. Not tales of leaving it. You know, one of those useless machines they used to make was called an MRI. And if we had any of those left, the doctors would have been able to find a cyst in my wife's brain before she died instead of afterwards. And then she'd have been the one sitting there listening to this instead of me, which had been a good thing because she was always the, the calmer one. I'm sorry about your wife, Mr. Cooper. Murph got into a fist fight with several of her classmates over this Apollo nonsense. So we thought it would be best to bring you in and see what ideas you might have for dealing with her behavior. This Apollo nonsense, eh? Interesting. Okay, so let me put my comments here because I put this on the article. Uh, first of all, this movie was horrible. Uh, I mean, Anne Hathaway might have as well have been a corpse. And Matthew McConaughey is just the same person in every movie now. It's just this... I'm not even going to describe it. Um, so what I say here is, back to the scene, if you listen carefully, they didn't say that the moon landings were faked, but that they had to say that they were faked for the purpose of bankrupting the Soviet Union. In other words, we really went there, but we can't admit it anymore because it gives people a false hope. Do you see how devious and evil these people people are? No, we never went there. So that's a very, very clever thing. But it's interesting to me that it, you'll have to listen to the audio again and again. There's a lot there. Um, it, it's connected with science. It's connected with health care. It's connected with uh, hoaxes. It's connected with uh, the textbooks. Uh, one of the replies could be, Okay, so now you admit that you produce textbooks that have lies in them. Because either you were lying in the earlier textbook that I just brought you, or you're lying in this new textbook. So the fact of the matter is that it is undeniable that it is government policy to use lies and mind control in school textbooks. That's undeniable by what you already admitted. So very, very interesting. A lot of conspiracies out there. That's the wrap up. Let's look at gold and we'll close with that. Um, we'll go out to the monthly chart with gold because you can see that we've already gotten the cross with gold. This is what we're waiting on with silver. We're waiting for this monthly cross. Um, you can see that this type of thing here is absolutely unprecedented. We don't have 
a cross like this from negative 75. So it appears to me that it is definitely projecting this type of move. Um, when that's going to come, I don't know. But uh, things seem to be moving faster and faster. It's going to be coming soon. And we'll talk to you next time.